I said, what if I just eat as much meat as I want, um, but cut out the vegetables? And there was no Sean Baker. There was no Paul Saladino. There wasn't you, Jimmy, with your resources um, to explain how to do a carnivore diet correctly. Um, there, there were a lot of keto folks. And so I made a ton of mistakes. Well, um, the day they didn't call it carnivore, because when I first came on the scene back in 2005, first blogging, and then this podcast started 2006, they called themselves zero carbers. Yeah, and, Charles Washington. Well, yep. Charles Washington and Kelly Hogan yep. and Amber, they were yep. all the OGs of what yep. originally was the carnivore diet, which was the zero Absolutely. carb diet. I, I remember my first impression of the zero carbers wasn't so much that I thought it was totally preposterous to cut yeah. out all carbs. I was at 20. Wasn't a big leap to go to zero. Uh, <laughs> but – it just was the arrogance of, well, this is the only way. So they kind of they kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, and I told Kelly that many years later, just recently, and she's like, wow, I didn't even realize that it was coming across that way. And not her specifically, yeah. but others in there. Do you feel even today that the carnivore community has a bit of an aggressive look mm. and feel from certain people? Great question. I think certain people, I think the vast majority of people aren't that way, especially, um, you know, they can come off that way on social media in a soundbite and in an Instagram post in a yeah. story. But especially if you get any, anyone, even the people who seem the most extreme on a podcast, talk to them a little bit, present some ideas. They'll say, not everyone needs to be carnivore. Carnivore isn't a life commitment, et but, cetera, et cetera. But- problem is it's the imagery of when people search out carnivore and they find one of these people they yeah. could be playing a part on on social media to get attention but that's now how they're viewed and i'll give you an example of this from the vegan world i had on this show the 30 bananas a day guy harley johnstone yeah writer from australia i had him on my show because i'm like nobody can be that big of big of a asshole in person no yeah. it's not possible yeah, he wasn't as big. He was still an asshole, but he wasn't <laughs> as big of fun. And he had a nice conversation with me. He was still totally wrong about nutrition, but the persona. And I remember I asked him that specifically. Why are you such a prick on camera? And he's like, <laughs> oh, you have to get attention to stand out. I'm like, not. I have never been that way in my own. No, work. not at I all. Let my work speak for itself. And I have a pretty good following. And so it was kind of weird to me that. There are people that feel like they need to be bombastic and boisterous just to get attention, which I think just be genuine to who you are, which is why I love what you do. You're you're not anything more than Scott Mylinski. You're just presenting it, take it or leave it, and I'll be okay in my life. You go be okay in your life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I try. I, I try not to be dogmatic or, or really try to preach or prophetize carnivore diet as, as you know, one size fits all or a magic pill. It's, you know, this is something that has helped a lot of people. Uh, it could help you. Um, self-experimentation is awesome. But if you're if you're doing great, if you're motoring along, if like Rob Wolf says, you you look, perform, and and feel your best doing what you're doing, then don't change anything. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you're right. Uh, most of the carnivore community, you get them on a podcast. I've interviewed a bunch of them on this show. Um, they'll be the first to say, hey, I don't think everybody needs to be on a carnivore diet. Just like I get pegged in keto that way. Oh, Jimmy Moore wants everybody to eat keto. I'm like, when have I ever explicitly said that? Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, so I don't care how someone eats. I just present information and say, okay, here's the information. Do with it as you will. And as informed individual people who can make their own choices, I trust people to do what's best for them carnivore fits that in fact my my diet today scott you'll you'll be pleased to know that for the past three years i've probably done more keto carnivore where i I did higher fat kind of carnivore at first yeah i'm now leaning even a little more protein not high protein but more protein than i did even three years ago You, you shift with it and that's the fun part about nutrition you should never stay static on any one given way of eating. You should constantly be evolving it because guess what? You today is different than you were five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You need to change. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And it's been great to watch your journey 
Jimmy, all the way back to, you know, you doing your, your crazy, um, protein sparing modified fast experiments under yeah. the advisement of Ted Neiman, <laughs> yeah. um, to, to okay. where you are today. It's, it's been yeah. really interesting. That was interesting. Uh, and I did an experiment on another podcast, Keto Hacking MD podcast with John Lemansky, and we got uh, Ted to help us design it. It was supposed yeah. to be high protein um, just to see what would happen. And I was getting hypoglycemia. But again, yeah. it goes back to you got to figure out what's right for you. Like somebody could have eaten that exact same uh, macronutrient ratio that I did, which ended up being about 45 percent protein and 55% fat. It was a hell of a lot of protein. Yeah. <laughs> I was chicken breast trying to get enough protein in. Um, and, and I did poorly because I felt bad. Uh, they think that I might have some kind of uh, a malfunction in the gluconeogenesis process. So it didn't quite, you know, translate mm. over very well. There might be a glucagon issue. There's a lot of like moving parts to figuring out what's right for you. But what it did tell me is that's wrong. <laughs> and I also did the flip side of that. I went super high fat. And again, all carnivore based, 90% fat diet. I did super bad with that one as well. So yeah. between 40 or 55% fat and 90% fat is probably my sweet spot <laughs> Yeah, where I fall somewhere around 70% fat in my diet. I don't count it. I just eat my food, enjoy the food. I, and, and that's something, again, that I think you try to bring out in your work is, look, it's just food. Just eat the food. Let it nourish you. Um, do you look and feel and perform at your optimum like Rob Wolf says? Good. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so so starting out for me, like the zero zeroing in on health group was there, but the, I, I guess the resources weren't as widespread as they are today. Right. Um, how to begin a carnivore diet, how to get started. Um, there's books, there's podcasts, there's everything. And so I made a lot of mistakes. I was doing a lot of things wrong actually yeah. um, with my version of carnivore, but I still saw a lot of great results and progress in terms of my digestion, my mood, my energy, my body composition. Um, and so that was really encouraging and I stuck with it and I learned a lot over the years. And from 2016 to, to 2019, um, you know, started the podcast and interviewed a lot of people and got help from a lot of experts and also tried to, um, you know, a big part of my podcast is exposing N equals one success stories of yeah. folks who have overcome Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, PCOS, major depression, uh, et cetera, with carnivore ketogenic diets. Um, in addition to the experts and researchers um, to, to try to just, again, change people's thinking, not necessarily persuade them, but open them up to the possibility that, hey, I actually have a, a an aunt with major depression. Maybe this would help her. Maybe I'll shoot her this podcast. Maybe she'll she'll try it for 30 days, for 60 days. Um, and, you know, if, if that can can do that for people and maybe help some people, um, that's that's all that's all I'm about. That's my goal. Well, and you do a good job of it. And and I admire anyone that's willing to do this medium here because it it looks easy, but it's not always so easy. So <laughs> I add kudos because you've been at this now for a little bit and, and that's great. Like most most people get excited about doing a podcast and they're excited. They do 10 episodes and they're like, crap, that's a lot of work. And I do <laughs> four a week. So um those people that say once a week's too much, I'm like, yeah, hold my beer. Um, <laughs> I'm not on your level, Jimmy. No, and 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 I'm a madman. So, but I'm also passionate, and I love the craft. I I love the connection with people. That's one reason I do this show, and it's been a godsend during the pandemic when we can't really see a lot of people. The the podcast and being able to do video and see people. It's not the same as being with people, but it's pretty close. So. Um, and I love that you've taken this chance. So what, why a podcast? Why not a YouTube channel? Why not, uh, other mediums? What was it about the podcasting format that was attractive to you? Yeah. So I, I was a huge fan of podcasts and ha have listened to podcasts for a long time. And at the time I was you know, probably listening to four to six hours of podcasts a day yeah. myself. And, um, you know, as you said, I was listening to great shows like yours and Sean Baker's and two keto dudes and all of these, these podcasts were having carnivore guests on, but yeah. there was no podcast branded as carnivore as, as, you know, meant to be specifically for carnivore 
the carnivore community and for people to learn about carnivore. And so, you know, less from a, oh, great, this is going to be my chance to make money or something like that. It was more so like, I really want to connect with the carnivore community. I want to be deep in this community. Um, like many carnivores, I probably felt a little bit like a social um, outcast for, for being so so strict and intense about my diet. And um, like you said, Jimmy, I wanted that that social connection and I also wanted to embrace the community and meet people. And so Carnivore Cast just seemed like a natural extension of that. Well, and here's the fun part about it. Like I had no idea how far and wide Live in La Vida Low Carb had made it uh, mm -hmm. until 2012. I got to go speak in Australia for the first time. I've been able to do it three times now, but awesome. first 2012, didn't even have keto clarity or anything yet i was just a podcaster yeah i remember my first talk was in front of this audience in melbourne australia and it was probably 300 people uh in the audience and i and i threw out the question so how many of you have heard of the live in la vida low carb show three fourths of their hands went up in the wow. air what like to me and and you you probably don't even realize the reach carnivore cast is having to me you know and us americans we just think here locally but this is global like if you ever go on some of those podcasting charts around the world click on the different countries i'm big in australia canada us uk i mean it's it's different countries and you'll get to see just how big your your podcast is and it was humbling at the same time because i was like Oh crap! When I get behind the microphone, there's more people listening than I thought. And, <laughs> but it's cool because there's such a connection that when we get to have conferences again, Scott Mylinski will get to go to some carnivore or keto conference, and they're gonna know you, and they're gonna go, "Oh my gosh, that episode yeah. would so change my life." Or I heard a story of the N equals one person that you shared, and my goodness, that was what got me to start carnivore. Like that's the kind of thing that will stick with you for a lifetime. Yeah, so much so. Um, and I went to the first Boulder Carnivore Conference put on yeah. by Amber yes. um, a couple of years back, and that was just so meaningful to to meet all these people in person who I had who I had spoken with over the podcast and to shake their hands, give them hugs, share share a Carnivore meal with them, and um, like also hear from from fans just and listeners, just as you said. And um, you know, I, I was really sad that that like KetoCon and all of these other conferences essentially got kind of shut down and crowded out um, by the pandemic because I was, I was so looking forward to more of that, more of that. Yeah. It, it's, it's one level to connect with all these people online, but then to go to these conferences and really feel so deeply as a part of this community is, is really wonderful. Well, it looks like they're coming back later this year. I know the Las Vegas Keto Expo is coming in October. Uh, I think I saw Low Carb USA is putting on event, maybe the Great. Metabolic Health Conference. So there's a bunch of them coming back. Awesome. Slowly but surely, we're getting back there. But <laughs> I'll never forget the first big conference I went to was a paleo one. This was in 2011. It wow. was the Ancestral Health Symposium. Um, and I was the token low carb guy in the paleo space. And so, yeah, we'll appease you. Come on. Um, but I, I go there and nobody knows what I look like. All they heard was the podcast. So Dr. Lustig, Dr. Robert Lustig walked up to me. Hey, Jimmy, how are you? And because I had interviewed him. And as soon as I spoke, all these heads whipped around because they recognize your voice. And I'm sure you got a lot of that at the Boulder event where, oh, my gosh. That's carnivore cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, a bit. That's I. I'm sure I don't get it nearly as much as you. But someone, you know, I would I would be chatting to someone in a group or or, or like one person, and someone else would go, "Do do I know you? What, what? Oh, you're Scott. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So that that's always fun. It's kind of cool. And and the funny part is, yes, this does take a lot of work. But when you love it and and you're good at it, which you are. Um, it just oozes with enthusiasm and people want to want to connect with you. It, it's almost like you have family and friends that you didn't know you had. And I tell people that when they when they meet me, though, you don't know who I am. I'm like, that's OK. You're still family. Come here. And I'll give them a big uh, that's great. It's awesome. I, I, I love I love what this lets us do with our audience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Me, too.